Did you know there is one wire that can cause you to have an extremely high electric bill? Just a simple little wire connected at your thermostat that can at times double and maybe even triple your electric bill. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about what that wire is, what you need to know about it, and what you can do about it, and times when that wire is maybe raising your electric bill and you still don't think it is. We're gonna cover a few things that if you don't know what you're doing, you should hire a pro for. This is not a DIY thing. I think knowing some of these things will help you, whether it's dealing with that pro or addressing this problem itself, but just know if you don't know what you're doing, call a pro. And also if you get anything out of my videos, make sure you hit that like button and of course subscribe for more HVAC tips. Let's dive into this. The one wire we're talking about is the auxiliary heat wire. And I would say most technicians use the white wire when connecting to a thermostat. And I'm talking about non-communicating systems, systems where you're gonna have a green wire in a lot of cases controlling the indoor fan motor. You might have a yellow wire, you might have an orange wire, red wire, etc. But the auxiliary heat, usually marked W or aux on your thermostat is the one wire that will cause your backup heat to turn on. Now you may say, well, Josh, don't I need that wire? Don't I need it to stay warm? And in some cases, the answer is no, you actually don't need that wire. It's obviously there for a reason, especially on super cold nights. But where I live here in Virginia, we're not in a, you know, we're not in Canada, we're not in Minnesota, and there are heat pump systems on the market that can keep temperature, especially on mild days, with this wire not even connected. And you might say, well, shouldn't that system, even if it is connected, if it doesn't need the backup heat, shouldn't it work without it? Well, we're gonna talk more about that in just a moment. But that one wire, the auxiliary heat wire, the W wire, connects to usually a backup heat source. So whether that's you know, electric heat strips or maybe even gas backup, if you have a heat pump system, then that's gonna to connect to your backup heat. It is there for those extremely cold nights. It is there to kick in when that system goes into defrost mode and it's going to remove the frost or the ice buildup on the outdoor unit during heating mode, it has to run backwards. And if it didn't have some sort of backup heat, you might get a puff of cold air in your home. Again, not a big deal if it's a mild day or night. But the other reason it's there is you will notice on a lot of thermostats, you'll have an emergency heat. You can flip it to emergency heat and it will act as a backup in case the other system is failing. Maybe it's not working properly and you can immediately get heat with a lot of systems just by flipping it to that setting. Other times are when, say, a system has heat droop set up. Some thermostats are set up automatically that if there is a large difference between set point and the ambient room temperature, then it will bring on the backup heat source that way and energize that white wire. Maybe the settings in the thermostat are set up to be what we say too aggressive. It's causing that system to turn on that backup heat to reach temperature quicker. And sometimes just simply changing some of the settings in that thermostat can address that issue. And one of the biggest problems with all of this is you may not even notice when this is happening. You may not notice there's an issue with your system, for example, because the backup heat is in, it's being energized by that white wire and it is keeping temperature, you're staying warm and comfortable and you don't even know that there's an actual issue with the main heat source. A lot of times you're getting a higher electric bill and you just think, well, it's, it is colder, it's, it's that time of year and then come springtime, when it's time for that heat pump, that system to turn back to give you air conditioning, you then find a problem. Now, another thing I wanna say is why is it making your bill so high? Why is the backup heat source so much more of a drain on your electric? A lot of times we are looking at heat strips, for example, that can draw anywhere from 20, 40, even 60 amps with some of these backup heat sources, when in comparison, a standard heat pump system, some of these systems can run all the way down to only drawing, say, four amps. So you're talking about, you know, a heat pump system drawing anywhere between, you know, three, four, all the way up to, say, 15 or 20 to run those fan motors and compressors and so on. And then you got this backup heat that kicks on and now we're drawing 60 amps. And in some cases, you're running both at the same time. You've got heat droop that's, you know, you've got that big difference and it's running the heat pump and the backup heat source. And now you're really 
you know, got that electric meter spinning. Some common reasons why that wire itself may be energized too much. One is if the auto recovery is not set up correctly in the settings of that thermostat, you could have a system that you're even running a schedule or you're turning it down manually at night and then you're turning it back on, say in the morning or when you get home from work and it's bringing on that backup heat and drawing more energy when you were trying to save energy with all of that. It's almost like you could have set it and forget it and you would have saved more energy than actually trying to you know, make the system run less. Another thing you can do is set lockout temperatures. So on the thermostat itself, some of them have lockouts to where if it's above a certain temperature outside, it won't bring on the backup heat source regardless. Maybe the system itself is oversized and the backup heat source is also oversized. So you're drawing even more energy even when you're just trying to get a little backup heat to reach temperature. Another thing is cleanliness of the system. If you're not having it maintained properly and it's you know now struggling to keep up and it's going to bring on that backup heat to try to meet temperature, low refrigerant, problems with the system and other issues with that actual first stage heat could cause those auxiliary heat strips to turn on more than you want. Sometimes just setting the defrost cycle correctly. Maybe it's running more often than it should and it's bringing on the backup heat strips. Location of the thermostat. If it thinks it's cooler because it's located in a space where it's now bringing on the backup heat too much, that could play a role in all of this. Incorrect installation of the system. Maybe the backup heat is staged and having it turn on more often than it should. I remember a specific model thermostat that Honeywell was making, it was the 9000. I had it in my home and it was bringing on the heat strips almost every time. Some thermostats as simple as going in there and setting the thermostat from comfort to economy or some verbiage, you know, whatever they use there, but basically telling the thermostat, I want to save energy. And if it means I have to wait a little longer for it to reach temperature, let's do that. An undersized system. We talked about oversized systems, but maybe a system is just simply not designed for that space. They didn't do a proper load calculation. One of the things you can get on our website, newhvacguide.com, or they you know, didn't have a manual S done after that load calculation was performed. And now you've got a system that is going to struggle and it's going to bring on backup heat more often. And I could go on and on. I mean, we could just continue to talk about issues with the home or issues with the system itself that could all be causing this auxiliary heat to run more often than it should. Now, what can you do about that? Or what can you ask your pro to do about that? There are times, I used to have a friend that would either remove the white wire entirely. He did that in his own home. He would just literally, you know, just remove it and just kind of have it sitting in there. So that way, if he ever did wake up on a cold morning and it just was not keeping up, he could then connect it and then have the auxiliary heat kick on. Of course, you know, if you haven't run them in a while, it's going to have a burning smell where it's literally burning the dust off of those heat strips. But then on, again, mild days, mild nights, he would literally remove that wire. He'd get a little puff of cold air when the system would go into defrost, but then he would, you know, just use it when he needed to. Other times he, my friend who was also in the trade, would install switches by the thermostat. And he was essentially doing the same thing. He was allowing that thermostat to be manually overrode with that switch. So the homeowner could flip that switch on if they ever wanted the heat strips to kick on. But otherwise the thermostat's energizing that white wire thinking that it is bringing on the heat strips, but otherwise it's operating like it should. Again, these are all things that if you don't know what you're doing, I would get a pro for and also understand that just because you're over there manually overriding it, the thermostat is still very much in control of all that. Meaning if you, just because you flip that switch on, if the thermostat is not sending voltage on that wire, just flipping that switch on in a lot of cases still doesn't bring the heat strips on. You may have to switch it to emergency heat or have one of those other functions such as heat droop energize that wire. And if you've got a home that's very well insulated, a system that is sized and installed properly, there will be times when you just simply do not need backup heat. There's a lot of systems being made today where backup heat is not even needed. The heat pump itself is being able to provide 
heating well down below freezing temperatures. We have other videos that we've done and more coming up where I'm gonna be talking more about heat pumps and some of the features that you may not be aware of. Again, setting up the settings in that thermostat, having a thermostat with lockouts, that could play a big role in all of this. Another scenario is in my house, I don't even have one of these higher end heat pump systems in my upstairs. I have a standard regular single stage heat pump but I don't have heat strips in the air handler. And because heat rises, there might be a couple days out of the year where I live that maybe that upstairs is just constantly running to barely keep up. But most times of the year, I've got the downstairs system and it does have backup heat. The upstairs system just doesn't have it. But again, just understanding that that wire alone can affect your electric bill dramatically, I think plays a big role on how you proceed. Maybe you might talk to a pro, maybe you might install a different thermostat, or maybe you might get crazy and have one of those switches that we talked about. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. You guys are always keeping me on my toes. And yes, I do read those comments. If you like this video, I think you'll like this one too. It's where I talk about furnace failures and some secrets you need to know about. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button for more HVAC tips. We'll see you next time.